Hi everyone, so in this video we'll be talking about the book Big Data. So the key to predictions is Big Data, where it is made of all sorts of information gathered together and are being processed and analyzed instantly. An example of this is when Google can predict the spread of H1N1 flu outbreak in real time and place while other systems could not. This is because Google collects billions of search queries per day and makes prediction out of it. So basically the more information we feed the system, the more likely precise predictions and new information will be generated. These technologies have made data become exponential, but to what extent can we rely on it? For example, what if the data shows that 80% of criminals will commit crime again? Do we lock them all up and do what the data says? This leads to a concern of our individual's thoughts and actions. If data could predict almost everything we do, or will happen, do we have still have the right to control our lives? The movie Moneyball reflects the big data in a certain way, and here is why. During a baseball match, people presume that players with a better athletic appearance would win the match. However, in Moneyball's theory, they excluded the idea of appearance bias during the scout recruitment and predicted the player's abilities through mathematical formulas. This is just like how big data could predict results through algorithms in a system. With an implication of datafication here, its core is all about predictions. It applies math to huge quantities of data in order to infer probabilities, and it keeps a tab on the best signals and patterns to look for as more data is fed in, allowing a higher accuracy each time. In this case, Bean recruit players by calculating which player have a higher chance of winning, causing him and his team to win the game, with an exceedingly high score. Decisions tend to often be made by machines instead of human, as the data is huge and the algorithms in the system can predict a lot of things. A report from ProPublica published back in May 2016 discusses about how the computer system could actually be racist. The system had generated that a black woman was twice as likely to commit a crime than a white man. Yet later on, the woman has not been charged with any crimes while the man is now serving eight years in prison. It seems that the computer program was biased against black prisoners. Now, how did that happen? Computer systems work just like big data. The more information we feed it causes more information generated and performed, aka the more biased information going in causes more biased information coming out. This brings back the concern of how it will affect us in the future with algorithms telling us what to do or predicting what is going to happen. Will this eventually affect our freedom? When Google's paid search was introduced, advertisers no less took advantage of this by betting on specific words in search engine to reach customers. From a pay-per-click to pay-per-visit, this led advertisers to become even greedier towards targeting individual customers, where they would purchase information of customers' data to track their social behavior and interests, enabling them to target the customers individually. This allowed advertisers to know when to place certain ads to the right person at the right time. So when we look up a word on search engine, it is very likely that each person's search pops up different results. If there is an advertising food chain, the data exchange firm will dominate the top layer as they have a big amount of cookies and data to sell to advertisers. With Google's paid search advancing and advertisers gaining more access to our big data, will we still be able to protect our privacy? The episode Be Right Back from Black Mirror covers the aspect of cookies. This is where businesses can track consumers' interests based on their social media and then recommend specific products to targeted customers. In a show, Martha received an email of book recommendations on how to get over her grief almost right after her husband's funeral, even though she most likely did not state anything about this online. This action could even possibly be considered inappropriate. This shows how quickly the media can perceive Martha's situation and sell this data to businesses, where firms see this as an opportunity to target their audience right away. This raises a concern on our privacy, as it also applies to us in real life, where websites often have pop-ups stating their sites contain cookies. Even if we private some things on our social media, can we still be 100% certain that we, as individuals, are the only one that can gain access to our data. 
Based on an article on the independent news, Facebook admitted that the company uses people's microphones to gather data. Does this mean that Facebook has been listening to our conversations all along? Turns out this feature has been available for a couple of years and that they have been using this as a tool not just to help users, but might be listening to discussions and serve them with relevant advertisings. This just shows how big sites like Facebook would also find ways to reach us individually. A following article then discusses the worry that Facebook have actually been considering to secretly watch and record us through webcam and smartphone cameras to analyze how we react to different posts. This just shows how far a company can go just to reach us as audience. The chapter Hidden Logic of Search from the book Black Box Society uses Google as an example of search since Google has become our primary search engine. So as there are a lot of information feeding into Google, it had to filter all the information and rank the relevance and importance of search on each site. This has been known as the ranking method. So the ranking method is determined by an algorithm that is black boxed, which means only Google can gain access to it. And so the pros would be that other sites cannot manipulate their rankings on their search engine. However, for the cons, Google might usually be biased and tends to put their own like ad onto the search engine. So in order for Google to make profit from their free search engine, they gain income from advertisers that relies on their ranking method and by selling users data to businesses to allow the business to target individual customers easier. Our concern for this should be on whether or not we are giving big sites like Google too much power, allowing it to monopolize and manipulate the whole sector. So in the episode White Christmas from the show Black Mirror, Matt was able to easily gain access to some strangers' social networking accounts through photographic recognition. So basically, he went onto a live stream and he clicks on people's faces on the live stream and different social media accounts pop up. And with the most relevant one, when this just enables him to know um, who that person is and when and where that person have been. This is a bit like Google's ranking system where you just type up like a word and on the search engine and the most relevant site pops up. And however, Black Mirror takes us to a whole new level to a point where you can actually know where that person have been. So this enabled Matt to know where that person have been or what that person have been doing like even from from months ago just from pictures on their social media and matt just uses this as an advantage to conceive a false memory by saying how they met back in june and he acts like how he knew the guy when in fact matt only learned about this from looking up that person's social media online so this just shows that how convenient the system can be but also knowing that your account and your data can always be traced back. An article on PostPublica that was published on September 2016 investigates on how Amazon actually pushed their customers to buy more expensive products with their automated suggestion. The article demonstrated this by looking up superglue online with a result of glue that cost around $7 with free shipping from companies with high customer satisfactions. However, the offers were brushed aside by the computer program and instead were replaced by Amazon's glue with a slightly higher price. The price still seemed acceptable until the shipping cost revealed almost double the product price itself and that was before the taxes. This just proves that Amazon's pricing algorithms are most likely black boxed, in which they would rank their products first despite the pricing or product relevance, knowing that loyal customers would often be swayed. This raises a concern on whether big companies like Amazon will dominate the entire market, causing other small retailers to collapse.